Hey, hey, hey. Wait a second. I don't, I, I, that either that's either that's salt that you're planning to put on the popcorn. No. Or that's that's something that you're not allowed to do at the popcorn no, counter. Sir. No, sir. There's no sign here that says no cocaine on the counter. <laughs> they haven't specified. <laughs> I um. I used to work with uh, a young doctor who was a, a lawyer's administrative assistant before she went to medical school. She like spent a year working for like a legal practice. And she used to tell me all these great stories about how the lawyers would go to the pub on a Friday after work. And they would hire their like private upstairs room and everyone in the practice would go and drink in this room. And there would be a big pile of cocaine in the oh, middle God. of the table <laughs> and they would all share it out. Oh, Jesus. Really? Um, and, uh she, I kind of, she would kind of tell me this story because uh, I have probably given people uh, more cocaine than the average person in the street because we use it in nasal surgery. You do not. We what? do. Absolutely. The, the, like medical grade cocaine. Um, it's uh, very useful for nose surgery because uh, it constricts the blood vessels. So it dramatically reduces bleeding when you're yeah. having surgery on the nose and it makes everything completely numb. Wow. So uh, so you mix it with a little bit of uh, bicarbonate, which means that it crosses the cell membrane faster and it yeah. gets into the cells quicker. And uh, and then we squirt it up there while the patient is asleep. Oh, my Lord. And, and surprisingly enough, uh, after the operation is over, um, the patients are all somehow full of self-confidence and optimism <laughs> when they're in the recovery <laughs> ward. I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> Oh my but goodness! I'd never that, heard that of this. That is as close as I've got to cocaine, which is you know pretty close, but not as close as it has for some people. But yeah. I tell you, it, but um, it's a it's a steady feature of cinema. Yeah. Um, especially like cinema, like like the nineties, I suppose the eighties, the seventies. But it's, somehow, like I feel like cocaine is like a big figure in nineties cinema. Yeah, I think the it was a very popular drug, probably seventies, eighties in particular. It seems to have like flown under the radar in the last decade or two, certainly the 2000s, but people still use it, I'm sure. But you're right. I think uh, films like um, American Made, that takes place mm, yeah. that takes place probably in the 80s or Blow. Um, oh, yeah. Those are a couple of classic cocaine films um, of that era. I remember seeing Die Hard when I was like probably, I don't know, like 17 or 18 or something yeah. like that. And there's the, you know, the character in... Die Hard, who's clearly doing a lot of cocaine and gives yeah. him a lot of confidence to go and try and negotiate with the terrorists. Yeah. I must say, at the time, I think I was a little bit too naive to understand quite what it was that he was doing, even though he was carrying a can with Coke written on it, <laughs> presenting it to the camera. <laughs> I, that was not subtle, but I'm afraid it passed me by at I, that tender age. I love hints like that. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One film that I saw probably more or less when it came out, maybe a few years later, is Annie Hall. And there's this sort of famous cocaine oh. scene in that film that I learned a little bit more about later on um, <laughs> where he's out, you know, he's really a New York guy, but he goes out to Los Angeles with the, with um, Annie Hall played by, oh my God, Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. And, um, you know, he's sort of in this group, they're partying and he's supposed to do some cocaine and he does this cocaine a line or so and then he sneezes into the cocaine canister. It's like almost a mint <laughs> container, a little metal container and the cocaine flies all over the room and it's a big faux pas and everyone's looking at him just with disbelief. And um, later on I took a film class and read a book called, um, I think it's called When the Shooting Ends, the Cutting Begins. It's about editing <laughs> by Ralph Rosenblum. And uh, he said that when they, they tested that scene and people were laughing so hard that they had to keep just adding time to the cut. I <laughs> thought it was just going to be a quick laugh and then move on. But they tested it and they started adding seconds and seconds and seconds so that people could laugh in the theater without, you know, interrupting the next scene or whatever. Um, and it's a, it's a great book actually. And Ralph Rosenbaum, actually, it's kind of a peculiar story. He ended up retiring, um, not far from here and he worked at the, the main film and television workshops in Rockport, Maine, and he's buried there. It's a strange oh. thing. So when he, I did a program there, so I lived up there for seven weeks, uh, studying film and, um, you just walk by this tree and there's this stone and his ashes, um, which did not blow away like that cocaine. His ashes were stored <laughs> there. So you walk by this tree and the guy's buried right there on campus. But he's um, a really well-known. He uh, edited a lot of uh, Woody Allen's films. Um, but I remember reading that that chapter in the book about that scene and, 
and talking about how surprised he was that people thought that was so funny that he had to keep adding length to the <laughs> to the cut. Um, that's, that's something that's really noticeable about U.S. comedies when you see them in a U.K. cinema. Oh, yeah. Because you know, we love to laugh, but often we don't laugh at the same things that the sure. Americans do in this country. And when um, movies are cut for American laughs... In, in a UK cinema, you get this kind of big old oh. lull. I remember watching um, Wayne's World. That's it. In the UK cinema. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't get the big laughs in Britain that it does uh, in the US. Okay. Yeah. And so when you're watching it, there's just these long lulls. Yeah. Dead air, right? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> you're going, oh, OK, right. So clearly people must have been laughing at that <laughs> because it's being dragged out. But um uh, the other kind of uh, big cocaine movie I, I really kind of remember from the 90s is Deep Cover. Did you ever see that? No, Just no. Larry Fishburne no, no. and Jeff Goldblum, where um, Jeff Goldblum is like this uh, big cocaine dealer. And uh, Lawrence Fishburne plays an undercover cop who goes like really, really super, super deep cover um, to kind of infiltrate this kind of cocaine ring. Yeah. And then... Um, you know, things come come to the head in in, in a like it's really uh, memorable scene. It's kind of it's seared in my brain. Where I think um, Jeff Goldblum, um, you know, knows that they're about to be rumbled by the cops, and Jeff Goldblum, I I think as I remember, he shoots a cop, and Larry Fishburne realizes, God, this is the moment when I've got to come out of cover and I have to arrest him. Um, and kind of Jeff Goldblum is just telling him, you know, I can't remember the name of Larry Fishburne's character, but he's just telling him, get in the van. Get in the van. Yeah. And Larry Fishburne has to like really, really slowly tell him, you have the right to remain silent. And Jeff Goldblum just has no idea what's going on. What are you talking about? Um, and one of the reasons it, it, um, it's kind of stuck in my brain is because Jeff Goldblum's character in the movie is called David Jason, David um, Jason. which is the name of a, a very well-known, well-loved sitcom actor in the UK. Oh. And it's he who is like the least Coke dealer person <laughs> that anybody could name in Britain. Um, but it is a great drugs movie, actually. Okay. Deep cover. Deep cover. Yeah, yeah. great cast. Um, really memorable. Do you remember the scene in Boogie Nights where... Um, oh. <laughs> where Mark Wahlberg, or Dirk Diggler, I guess... And oh god, who's it's not, he's with another character. He goes to see Alfred Molina, who's um, I guess their coke dealer or something like that. And Molina's just pumped up on coke, and <laughs> it gets very violent. And they're do, the whole scene happens to um, it's, it, he turns up the volume on this terrible song from the eighties called Sister Christian, um, and he just acts maniacally, and the guns come out, and they feel like they're threatened for their lives. And I just love that scene, in part because the music is a, a, a real character in the scene too, and it's. A, I know the song well from youth, but it's terrible. Um, but it just it has that L.A. feel. They're in the porn industry, of course, and they're, everyone's doing coke. And he's just sitting in his bathrobe, snorting cocaine and listening to, uh, oh, God, what's the name of the band? Something Rider. Red Rider? No. Uh-oh. Let me go to Google and figure out who that band is. If you're an actor, get, getting a scene, getting a script with a scene where you're on cocaine must be such a gift because it's, you know, it's, it's um, there it is. It's a proper excuse yeah. to chew the scenery isn't it you can be as over the yeah. top as you like and it will never be too much and molina is yeah it's night ranger it's a terrible song but uh it's fun to <laughs> laugh to. yeah but yeah uh, and that's exactly what molina does you're you've got a good point there you like he just he runs with it i don't know if he actually did a little cocaine to warm up or uh <laughs> to study for the role or anything oh like that. yeah nothing could possibly go wrong with that plan yeah I was looking up that because I knew we would talk about cocaine. Um, so I was looking up some of the street names and there's kind of you know, some that I was aware of. So, oh, yeah, mm, Coke, oh, Dust, Flake. OK, yeah, Nose Candy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yo, I'm sort of aware of Speed Balls, which is like that's that's Coke with something else, I think, isn't it? Uh, that's so heroin, I think. Yeah, I think you're doing Coke. Is that right? OK, yeah. oh, man, that's oh, bloody hell. What, what a terrible combination. Yeah. But um uh, but some of the kind of like more amusing ones um, I had never heard of, um, like Bernie's Flakes, apparently, BMW, Flea Market Jeans, oh my God. Henry VIII, I've never heard of. <laughs> I'm not that um, yeah. yeah, Toyota, Tamales, Ski Equipment. So, so much, I, oh my, I was reading so many wow. nicknames for, for cocaine. I was starting to think, are there, are there any words which can't be used as a metaphor <laughs> yeah, exactly. for cocaine? We've pretty much gone through the whole dictionary here. I've heard very few of those. Snow, maybe. Coke. That's about it. 
but <laughs> Bernie's Flakes. Bernie's I'd like to know where that one came from. <laughs> or was it Flea Market Jeans? What was that one? Flea Market Jeans, yeah, yes. No idea. No idea. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I will say a couple of my favorite cocaine films, I think my two favorite ones are both South American or quasi-South American. Um, City of God, which is a Brazilian film by Fernando Marais. Ah. Um, I think it was such a great film. And it's he's an odd director because I don't really remember anything he's done after that. I think he did the one about the guard, Constant Gardener or something like that. Um, ah. I don't remember him making any films that had that same sort of uh, effect on me. But I think that film really covers the whole dealing of it really well. Um, and that was a really innovative film at the time. But the one I think my favorite cocaine film is starts in Colombia, ends up in New York. Um, it's by an American guy named Joshua Marston, I think is his name. Uh, Maria Full of Grace. Did you ever see this? Oh film? yeah. I think that I love that film. I think it's just so efficiently made, beautifully lit without getting crazy uh, in terms of uh, cinematography. Not spending a whole lot of time on, but it's just very smartly, I guess. Uh, setting up the lights and stuff. Um, but it also just, it's superhuman because it's about, um, you know, drug mules, people who are ingesting these little, um, I don't know, balloons or I don't know if they're even condoms they're, of cocaine. They're condoms, yeah, yeah. aren't they, I think? Swallowing condoms them and, for, and, yeah. and crossing borders. And uh, it's a superhuman story about the trafficking side of it. Um, and it's, yeah, certainly based on cocaine, but it's not about cocaine at the same time. And I think that's why I like that film the most. And I think it's just beautifully shot. It's really a human story. And I'd like to see more films like that in general, but um, that's a great cocaine film. There's a, you know, a very memorable scene again in that movie where she's given you know this, this like box of 40 yeah. condoms yeah. filled with um, cocaine and she has to swallow them all. Yeah. And, you know, you, it's, you get such a, physical visceral sensation of the yeah. you know the fear and the disgust and the the terror um of having to swallow these packages and carry them around with you knowing that if one of them bursts it's not going to end well that's right um you know, tremendous suspense in that film yeah it's absolutely great film and is she i think she's swallowing them whole right there's no yeah. drink you can't chase them with anything as i remember it's, yeah absolutely terrifying i know that um the end of um Cocaine Bear, yeah, uh, which which both of us were delighted to see. It's not often that you get to the end of the film and you see heave such a sigh of relief. Well, thank God that's over. <laughs> um, but the end of Cocaine Bear um, is uh, is cheered up with and simultaneously um, you're served a disappointment with uh, white lines, isn't it? The the it's, it's Melly Mel, isn't it? Um, yeah, with this kind of cocaine song from i think it was from 1985 wasn't it it is but it is yeah it's a remix though which taints it a little bit for me but yeah. yeah exactly it's the wrong version that that yeah so that song was in the charts when i was you know a teenager yeah, yeah. it was in the charts for like months yeah. um it was kind of it just sort of bubbled under between like you know number 40 and number 25 for a week after week after week after week people just kept buying it yeah. so you would hear it on the radio still and it would be played every week um, and you know, still a great song. And you know, once again, yeah, when I was fifteen or whatever, I didn't understand what white lines were. And yeah, um, oh. yeah I kind of, I think naively hearing it on the radio, I thought it was something to do with driving out in the middle of the road. Oh yeah. And so it was, it was like a sort of, it was a road safety metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Um, That's naive. That's brilliantly naive. That's fantastic. I was, yeah, I was a pretty provincial kid. But <laughs> oh man! But that said, we, why don't we have more road safety metaphor hits? There should be yeah. some. Yeah, in the UK, I, there were probably more kids being killed by road traffic accidents than there were by cocaine. So it's a little it makes sense. Yeah, it's, I was saying, it's a little ironic because I, I heard that song mostly in the backseat of a buddy's car as we were driving. I didn't own it, but he played it all the time, and we would sing that song really loud. But I probably have heard it more times in the backseat of that car than I've heard it in life outside of that car. So, <laughs> And we weren't exactly practicing road safety, but um, I, I think of it as a driving tune to a certain extent for that for that reason. <laughs> Just reminding you of what bits of the road markings to avoid. Exactly. Yes, Which absolutely. white lines to snort. <laughs> Not the ones on the pavement. It uh, looks like our white lines have arrived here. Look, uh, at last, we've got two big boxes of the real white stuff. That, <laughs> you can't inhale all these popcorn kernels. Um, let's, let's get our popcorn. We're going to go see the movie. Yeah. And I hope, uh, yeah, I hope it's a little bit better than last week's cocaine bear. Absolutely. Um, yeah. uh, jo join us next week for um, 
I've got to try and what we're watching now. It's oh, what Warriors of Future, the kind of the non grammatically named Netflix <laughs> film. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, yeah, that's the screening. Let's get in there.